Okay, what we're working on is a 71 Blazer that has a retrofit for air conditioning. Uh, the old system was an R12, the compressor's been replaced, all the hoses are new. We have a brand new condenser uh, mounted out in front of the radiator. And what I want to talk about is retrofitting and why some of them don't work. Today's R134 system really needs a, a very good condensing action. And our condenser down here, the very first thing I note is these are round tube condensers. And round tubes allow the Freon to move through so quickly, the refrigerant 134A, that it doesn't actually turn into a liquid. And that's what a condenser's job is. Just like a still makes alcohol out of steam, we're gonna make liquid uh, out of a gas. So refrigerant comes through here and then gets turned into a high pressure liquid. These tubes are round tubes and in today's cars with 134 and now 1234 uh, we have serpentine condensers and this condenser is just a little cutaway for demonstration but you can see that the flat tube is actually made up of lots of little tiny tubes inside and it serpentines back and forth back and forth. So the round tube condenser, like this came out with from the factory, this was to move a lot of refrigerant, um, and it, it, the refrigerant at the time, R12, didn't need a lot of condensing action. But today's 134 uh, and 1234, they do need condensing action. So the first thing I notice is that uh, we've got a round tube condenser. The second thing is the amount of space between the two um, areas where the fan is going to move through my light over here. So we've got about three or four inches between the radiator and the condenser. Air is going to move around that instead of through it and bypass going through the core. So we really want these two to be fairly close together. This, the third thing that I notice is that we have a fairly, a really nicely done, this, actually this whole job has been nicely done, but this fan really should be two fans. Um, not for the cooling of the engine, but for cooling of the air conditioner. So if I was going to redo this, I would want to add a second fan just like this one if possible, or maybe two smaller fans that are capable of moving more air. So that fan just isn't enough to pull the air through this. So what's going to be the problem here? Condensing is so important to get the gas into a liquid that we aren't going to have very cold air um, out of this. Running down the road, it might get down to 40, 45 degrees, but realistically, around town, the best we're going to see is maybe 60 or 70 degrees. Now, on a 100 degree day, 60 or 70 is better than 100 or 105. So, but retrofits, if you're going to do it, these condensers need to be swapped out into a serpentine condenser. Some of them have to be specially made, and I would suspect that that would be the case for this 71 Chevy is it would have to be specially made. So today we're working on the vehicle. It's about 90 degrees today. I think it's 87 and this is sitting up by the engine compartment so it's picked up a little heat. But this is important to know is what is our temperature that we're starting with. In this particular era, um, the sight glass was used as a determining factor for whether it had enough freon or not. These need to be covered up because that's absolutely not the way it's done. Now we depend specifically on gauges. And this system is sitting at about 106 pounds uh, rest, and that's telling me that we've got a fully charged system. This vehicle came in and it did not have uh, a switch located where I could find it anyway for the compressor. So I have a hot wire here and we're gonna make this compressor run. So I've got 12 volts here and you can see that the, the clutch is working. Uh, it has been filled with Freon, so we're going to start it up and we're going to have to let it run for a little while and I'll be back in a minute to uh, to see what we've got. Okay, so the engine's running, it's at about 1500 RPM maybe, uh, and we're going to engage the clutch. So, there's our clutch kicking on, and immediately we've got gauges that drop down to below 20. We don't have any heat in the system yet, so this number is going to climb in a different wheel too. But we'll see what we get here in about five minutes. We need everything to be warmed up. Whenever you service an air conditioner uh, of this this era retrofit, 
we got to have the heat of the engine in here to make everything work right. So we'll wait a few minutes and see what we got. Okay, so we started out about 90 degrees on this gauge, and it's dropping pretty quickly. I can feel the coolness with, by my hand, um, and it's dropping fairly rapidly, and I would suspect that it's going to stabilize somewhere around 60, 55. Don't choke down all of the vents. I leave them wide open. High blower, coldest setting on the fan, and we're going to see what we get for temperature. Right now it's coming up on 60 degrees. But because of our condensing action not being the way we want it, this is not going to be a really cold system. But again, 60 is better than 105. We'll be back in a minute. The engine's been running for three minutes or so, maybe four. Our gauges are starting to stabilize about 190 and 20. This is a full system and, and this is this is the pressure that we'd like to see. If we had a better condensing action, the high side would come down, so with the low side you might be able to get some more free on it. Here's the, the problem that I discussed earlier is the amount of air that I can feel going around the condenser into the radiator put up here. So this needs to be blocked off. This needs to be something done there. In a perfect world, I would move this condenser back to the surface of the radiator. Um, maybe another fan could be added down inside here. There, there's quite a bit of room in there. So over here is our inlet into the into the condenser. Yeah, uh, the red gun. So this one is probably 150-ish, maybe 160. Uh, realistically, because this says 190, the temperature on this one may be 190. Over here, this is probably about, oh, I don't know, 80 or so. Uh, so there is heat transfer, and we're, we know that it's, that it's working. So here's an infrared gun. Let's see what we got on this side over here. These are not totally accurate, by the way, whenever we were shooting on uh, 120. Okay. Now this one over here, 23, nah, that's hotter than that. There you go. You saw 166. That's probably more like it. There we go, 170. Okay. So that's the temperature of that, that condenser on this side. Over here, these things determine uh, or rely on reflectiveness, 120. So we've got 40 degrees across the condenser. I'd like to see 50, 60, maybe in a perfect world, 70. Uh, so we, we do have temperature differential. Ambient temperature out here coming into the radiator is just a little bit above 90. Again, the shop temperature is about 85. So this is skewed a little bit because of the heat of the engine.
1500 RPM. So this, this condenser is doing its job. It's working. 